Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel for another update on growing lemon trees from seeds. This is a leaf infested by a leaf miner. It's very unsightly. These are fungus gnats resting. I, I do believe that uh, the cocoa choir, although slow decomposing, can serve as a mold farm if the conditions aren't right. Um, and it's just like really wet all the time. So um yeah this is another ugly leaf um a giant swallowtail the egg that's gonna hatch a bird poop caterpillar and those can get pretty big um the size of silkworms uh, pretty quickly within weeks they can uh, denude the entire tree and um, you can see there's giant swallowtail eggs um just one here one there uh, they're actually fairly difficult to peel off with your fingernail and um, it's not something you could just like flick away. So there's these little yellow dots, uh, kind of a mottled appearance that must be due to some kind of disease. Um, people always have this misconception that it's due to spraying or misting. Um, that's not what it is because I have many other leaves uh, on my other fruit tree series um, that don't ever exhibit this phenotype. And plus I haven't really misted um, much I don't think for a few years. I, I used to use a spray bottle on mist with distilled water or whatever, but um, uh, that's not something I, I do anymore. And yeah, when I apply pesticide with a backpack sprayer, that is, I mean, yeah, it's a fine mist at first, but it, it quickly becomes, um, you know, just wet leaves all over the place. And then to say that you know, water droplets during the day when the sun's out cause these little tiny burns, uh, local burns on the leaves. I mean, that's kind of like saying if it rains in the Amazon rainforest and the whole rainforest just dies. Um, so, uh, I mean, yeah, there's a lot of tropical places where it rains during day. And then, then there's that arguing that that's, it's not a fine mist, but um, neither is what I'm doing when I apply pesticide like once every two months on average, or, or maybe one month if the problem is really bad. So yeah, other than that, I mean, I'm not even misting my plants. So um, yeah, it's still getting that phenotype, those little yellow dots. Um, that must be due to, you know, it could be bacteria, virus, uh, fungus, um, you know, being transmitted by plant parasites, by pests. So what I'm doing here is I'm flushing out the buildup of Epsom salt. There's a ring of salt halfway between the trunk and the pot edge. Um, which I showed you in some previous uh, updates in the series. So you can see there's not a lot of biomass here. It's just uh, some new stems shooting up and they're pretty flexible and green. Uh, there's no spines yet. Um, not many of these to then. Yeah, so there's a, an Epsom salt buildup in all my pots and I decided to just flush out as much as I could this way because I figured I, I might be over salting some of uh, my, my plants and the reason I'm doing this in particular for this lemon tree is because I think that maybe you know the earth the the cocoa choir is over salted and that might be resulting in leaf curl and other uh, symptoms but in hindsight I, I don't really think that's the problem but you know, that is kind of a problem too, if there's like salt burn for the roots. Um, I think this was the right move to do at the time, just uh, flush things out. And there's already been uh, a few saturation waterings done in previous weeks. So this footage was filmed, I believe, um, you know, was it uh, maybe, yeah, September 16th. So, yeah, there's, uh, you know, it's coming off of summer where it's all hot and dry. There's a lot of evaporation and I kept uh, fertilizing with miracle Grow, uh, sometimes with crushed multivitamins to provide for calcium and other trace minerals and metals. And um, yeah, I think that could have oversalted the, the cocoa choir. So uh, when you see a ring of salt uh, emanating around the trunk of uh, one of your trees, uh, regardless of whether it's in the ground or in a pot, um, that's something to watch out for. It could be a problem. So I decided to do a full flush. You could see the the spout of water coming out from the bottom uh, left here. 
and it's sort of pooling in this low-lying area and it's colored because um, of the decaying cocoa choir in the water reservoir um, you know it's, it's just wet all the time so yeah and this is just me applying a little bit of that old bear by advanced three and one and new spectricide immunox so I should really go buy a new bottle of that old bear by advanced so the next time I'm spraying uh, I should do that because it starts to get like a little rancid smelling if I make a big batch in that backpack sprayer and just like let it sit there for uh, weeks or months so this is 2024 October a uh, month later 4.75 years day 1735 you can see yeah the, the new leaves start off healthy so they're like a light green and you already have some unhealthy leaves uh, that are nascently developing that are sort of yellowish um, maybe it's possible they, they kind of come in that way but um, some of them look a little bit too curled which is uh, concerning so yeah there's always been issues with this plant regarding uh, leaf health and, and plant health so um, yeah you can see there's a model leaf um, in the center there that's one of the older leaves so it's like yeah we're generating a lot of new leaves but at the same time the rate at which the new leaves um, exhibit uh, signs of disease or stress or, or some kind of problems is uh it's a very fast rate you know of decline for these leaves which is uh, very worrisome so i've been doing a lot of thinking uh, in the making of this video and um, over the months in which uh, this video footage encapsulates throughout this episode and i have some uh, changes that i'd like to implement going forward and um, you know um, theories on as to why things are keep turning out the way they do so yeah now i don't have a caterpillar problem because perhaps i've been spraying the pesticide but i still have a disease problem you know it's probably fungal in origin and i'm trying to figure out different ways to uh, cope with this either holistically or um, you know through targeted chemical means so here's me squeezing a leaf miner it's it's actually better to use the fingernail and just like pinch but you also don't want to do that too hard because you'll rip into the leaf and create another wound so um leaf miners I, I don't know much about their biology and how they're getting in there and what their eggs look like but um they're all over this it's uh everything likes to target this lemon tree uh, even more so than the mango that I had, the Alfonso mango. So I don't have that anymore. Um, it's possible that I could try another series just growing from seed. Um, that's something I might do. Uh, there's there's always a lot of choices. But um, yeah, there's there's some others that I'd like to end as well. The, the ice cream bean. It's like I've already been through like two or three crops of that and uh well two full seasons fruit bearing seasons so um i'd like to just get rid of that and start a new series but i i'm kind of pressed for time too and running this youtube channel is um kind of low on my priority list but uh i do enjoy this as a hobby so i'm gonna keep making videos it's just um you've definitely noticed that you know over the as the years have gone by um i'm not churning out videos at the toward pace I was uh, let's say like 10 years ago or 10 plus years ago so um, yeah that's just life you know it's like there's got to be other things going on but you could see every other leaf is practically diseased or infested by leaf miner so this is 2024 December 4.93 years um, the wet season is not providing rainfall so far so I had a bit of a concern about um, the plants going you know low on water for too long but I figured the reservoir in this is probably completely full I mean these are waxy leaves there's not that many of them compared to some of the other plants that I have uh, so 20 days ago I sprayed some more of that stale bare 
three and one BioAdvance plus the fresh, uh, fresh Spectracide Immunox plus uh, Fisin 20. So Fisin 20 is a very powerful antimicrobial agent that should help with, uh, you know, fungus work as a fungicide as well, but it also targets uh, bacteria and viruses. So I added a little bit of that stuff in. The bottle is not super new, but I just never used it. I just kept it underneath my uh, kitchen sink in a Ziploc bag. But uh, I'm, I'm willing to try different things now to see if I can improve the health of this. I knew this would be a problem that I'd have to address and deal with someday because it just seems like all these disease problems have persisted in the beginning, um, since the beginning for like five years, basically. it's I, I've had this growing in a sand um, and partial clay soil mixture and I've tried, uh, you know, Coco Choir and, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's always the same problems, you know, the, the little yellow dots, even if it's on my friend's balcony on that, uh, condo that I was renting, that place would get zero direct sun for many months out of the year because of the direction the balcony was facing and the overhang that extended beyond the balcony. And that still had that uh, yellow dots problem on some of the leaves. And that was uh, in the first uh, year of this applied growing series. So this is in January. So it's been pretty dry. There's been very little rainfall. Uh, San Diego, California is in a Mediterranean climate. So it has a wet uh, winter rainy season. That's when we get most of our rainfall and normally there would be a lot of rainfall starting sometimes even in november and december but uh this season's been really really dry so i'm, I'm starting to think it's some sort of record just based on uh, not getting any rain even by january um, it's maybe there were some drizzles here and there that moisten the ground and that's about it so you can see there's a lot of really curled leaves here I have to do something differently to try to cure this plant of its uh, disease state. And um, yeah, there's a lot of uh, leaves that have fallen victim to leaf miners as well. So it's just like really, really unsightly. Uh, but there are some new leaves coming out. It's just like they can't stay healthy for all that long. And um, yeah, I'm still in the process of trying to troubleshoot this plant. But, um, but yeah, after a while they, they get all old and dusty looking, they lose their shiny waxy appearance. And, um, then the leaves just, uh, start to brown or yellow off, start to burn and then they fall off, you know, then the nutrient cycle, uh, repeats itself. You know, if the leaves stay on top of the cocoa choir for long enough, but overall, I would say there's a decent amount of growth. Uh, it's continuous growth, but you can see the plant is always in a diseased state, um, except for the very new leaves. So this was the last time I fertilized with uh, miracle Grow and crushed vitamins, but no Epsom salt. I didn't want to salt the pot again. So I started to think about what could be causing all these problems. And it seemed to me, uh, just by anecdotal evidence and observation that, um, you know, these uh, frequent waterings, especially during the hot months, um, when the water requirements are much higher, seem to be causing problems. Um, it could be the fertilizer or it could just be the water itself. But um, yeah, the fertilizer, it, it causes a burst of vegetative growth and you get really big leaves, um, but that causes the stems to uh, just kind of bend over from the weight of the leaves. It's something I've noticed, um, and I, I used to think that was just a domain of plants grown from cuttings, but that's actually not true, as I'll show you in um, the next update of growing avocado trees from pits. So here I'm spraying more of this uh, pesticide, fungicide, and I think this is the biggest uh, positive development, uh, agent of positive change uh, in the series so far um, in recent episodes. But um, yeah, I think I need to make some changes. Um, I have theories on, you know, the tap water just passing 
you know, mold from on the top down. Um, maybe it's disturbing the root structure um, by shifting all the, the cocoa choir around. There, there's something going on with, um, you know, just the watering and the fertilization, which um, causes sort of an unnatural growth state in the plants and causes imbalances and problems. So the, the plant is recovering a lot better and this could possibly be due mostly to the, the Fison 20 and the new uh, Spectrocyte Immunox. You know, it's antifungal, um, anti-pest, anti-disease. So the, the foliage looks a lot healthier and now we have a majority of uh, new leaves coming out which are kind of a light yellow green and uh, I don't really see that many that are deformed. And uh, we have some older surviving leaves that are dark green and these will eventually be shed. And, um, you know, if we solve the problem, then um, going forward, all the leaves should look uh, new and pristine for quite a while. So, yeah, the plant looks good from this angle. Um, there are still some marred disease leaves. Um, yeah, so I'm thinking just... Uh, maybe scream, sprinkle some like crushed leaves on the top or uh, maybe there's enough organic material bug detritus in there after uh, three years of these pots sitting out here or is it two years probably two and a half um, in cocoa choir you know so maybe there's been some breakdown of the cocoa choir itself which releases some nutrients although it's just uh, coconut husk so I don't think it's a complete nutrition source but there's leaves falling down, um, weeds that I pulled and just left on top. Um, there's bugs living in there. Um, not necessarily the Argentine ants in this pot, but um, there's like bugs, there's bug droppings, birds come by, um, they leave droppings uh, once in a while. So over time, organic detritus uh, collects and seeps into it with successive watering. So that should provide for uh, fertilization. And um, yeah, maybe nutrients is not the, the limiting factor for my plants. Maybe uh, too much um, nitrogen and other uh, primary nutrients has been causing problems, imbalances um, that lead to um, all the leaves just being in a constant state of uh, disease. I was also thinking that uh, rainwater is much better for plants than using tap water from a hose, uh, regardless of, you know, whether you're just pouring it in brutally or um, using a, a shower wand, because rain just kind of seeps in very gently and it doesn't disturb anything. And it's true that um, if there's mold spores on the surface or other fungal pathogens, um, rain could also be pushing that deep down, but it, it's a very gentle process of uh, absorption and diffusion versus using um, tap water from a hose. You're just uh, pumping huge waters, uh, water volumes down there. Then that causes shifts in the cocoa choir. Maybe it's disturbing uh, the fine root hairs. Um, something's going on. It seems like every time there's a big tap watering, it causes uh, a fungal bloom down there. Or maybe in conjunction with the fertilizer, with the chemical fertilizer, the miracle Grow, it's causing some kind of harmful microorganism bloom or algal bloom or whatever down there. And then um, that just messes up the plant after a few days.